Jesus has turned the world upside down in, a, uh, in regards to servant leadership. It was beforehand, he says, the, the Gentiles lorded over their subjects. They made their authority felt over the people that they were in charge of. And yet, this is not how it was supposed to be. Jesus said, if you want to be great, you need to become the servant of all. If you want to be first, you must be the slave of all. And then he, he said um, that he was the example of this. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And Jesus not only taught this with his words, he showed it with his life. And so this is the paradigm of Christian leadership that we are to serve and to be of service to others. And so today, I just think we should ask ourselves this question, how can I serve? Where is God calling me to serve? How can I serve God? How can I serve my neighbor? How can I serve in my family, in my parish, in my community, in, in society, in the church? That's the question that each one of us needs to ask today. And when we determine what God wants from us, we should carry that out. And we should do that with um, certain characteristics. One thing is that we should serve with joy. The Psalms say, serve the Lord with gladness. We can't serve God with a grudging heart. You know, it says, God loves a cheerful giver. And so we should always be cheerful and joyful whenever we go to serve. And there's a paradox here because when we do serve, we feel joy because we are giving of ourselves and becoming more of who we are. And this brings us joy. And so it's not hard to be joyful while we serve, but it's something that we need to keep in mind. Um, we should also serve with humility. We should not uh, take so much credit for everything that we do. One of the popes mentioned the example of the donkey that Jesus rode into the holy city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. He said, if that donkey, when he heard the crowd cheering and, and acclaiming Jesus, if he would have thought that, that it was all for that donkey, and he would have pranced about, people would have laughed at him. Because it's not about the donkey that the Lord rides in on, it's about the Lord. And so it is in our life too. It's not necessarily about us. So we need to, when we do serve, we should serve with humility and know that we are doing this for the Lord. And we should serve the truth. We live in a world of falsehood and lies. And so we owe it to the world to witness to the truth, to serve the truth in our lives. That is very important because we don't want to give in to relativism. We don't want to give in to falsehood. We need to serve the truth. This is what people um, desire from us. If we are to be the salt of the earth and the light to the world, we need to serve the truth. And we should serve without hiding our faith. You know, we, we should show people that the motivation for all, of the, all that we do is our love for Jesus and our imitation of him. We shouldn't hide the fact that we are Christians, that we are Catholics. We can't become like chameleons, you know, changing our colors every place we go. We should be like Jesus, um, the light to the world. And we shouldn't give in to the society, societal pressure that says that we need to check our faith at the door of the school, or workplace, or government offices, or the, the public square, or the voting booth. This is not good. We need to be people of integrity, and we need to carry our faith to wherever we go, and in that way, to serve. And so these, these are some things that we can think about as we go to serve. I want to give you an example of a modern-day uh, martyr, an uh, example of a, a servant leader. His name was Blessed Jersey Popolusco. Jersey Popolusko. Don't ask me to spell his last name, okay? <laughs> He's from Poland, and he was a priest in the middle part, or the later part of the 20th century. And he was just a simple priest, but he found himself um, rising to the occasion to be a leader of his people as they opposed communism, as their country was uh, occupied by the communists. He started to help with this solidarity movement, which was a group of workers that were advocating for the rights of workers, for the defense of life and human dignity. And every month he started to celebrate these masses for their country. And so many people came to these masses that the cathedral was completely filled and people were out front. And then they decided to have them outside. And there was half of Warsaw 
coming to these masses and they even broadcast them over the radio. And so he was a servant of the truth, a servant of goodness to the people. He was a spiritual sign of resistance to communism. And so um, he taught these important messages. He taught them to overcome evil with good. And he taught them that the greatest thing that we need to do is overcome our fear and to live as, as our, our faith tells us. And so obviously he became someone that had a target on his back and that the communists didn't like. They told him to stop it and he wouldn't. And um, one day they abducted him after he had celebrated mass and they brutally beat him up and tied stones around him and threw him in the river and drowned him. And uh, he died a martyr by the secret communist secret police. And that was 40 years ago yesterday that he died. Uh, he was only 37. And 11 days later, they, they found his body. They had a funeral. And at his funeral mass, one million people showed up. One million people. And then in 2010, he was beatified by the Catholic Church. Not yet canonized a saint, but hopefully someday he will be. And uh, he exemplifies what Jesus says. If you want to be great, you must become the servant of all. If you want to be first, you must become the slave of all. And so we can ask ourselves that question, how am I called to serve? And hopefully we can discern a good answer to that and carry it out with joy, with humility, serving in truth, not hiding our faith. And we can look to the examples of the saints like Blessed Jersey Popolusco. And of course, we can look to the example of Jesus himself who came not to be served, but to serve.